This is part 6 where I need to lap the valves, replace the valve stem oil seals and clean some of the carbon deposits off the head and valves. First I will make something to keep all the valves in order so I can put them all back into their original positions. So using the head gasket as a template I drew around it and marked the position of all the valves. So this way I can just take the valves out of the cylinder head and pop them into the locating holes. A quick safety note, I left the inlet manifold gasket on for some silly reason and at the end of the job I had to visit A&E because it's razor sharp. Please remove the gaskets and do not leave them floating around to slice your fingers in half like I did. Here's a photo showing that lethal gasket which is extremely thin and like I said very sharp. So on to the cylinder head now. Here are four photographs to help show the parts that make up the valve components in the cylinder head. So the main parts to the valve are the actual valve itself, the spring seat which the spring then sits on top of with a spring retainer and two split collets at the top and also you have a valve seal. I'm going to also mark all the valves so I can be totally sure that I don't accidentally mix them up as it's important they all go back exactly where they came from. So I'm going to use one of those white paint pens because that should be able to mark onto sooty valves. So I'm going to mark all the valves with which cylinder they came from, 1, 2, 3 and 4. I'm then further going to mark the valves A, B, C and D so that I can then relate that back to the holder that they're all going to go into. Just making sure the B's can be seen there. I will now use a valve spring compressor so remove the inlet valves. So I'll show this process from several different camera angles. Um, so this is obviously the first valve to come out. So I'm using my little magnet there to remove the collets, the split collets. So off comes the valve with the retainer. Pop the valve out. Keep those two together. And make sure you put them in the marked location of whatever you're using. So now onto the second valve. So I'm using my spring compressor. Push down. It can be quite stubborn sometimes. Um, you seem to be able to, it almost seems to be locked on. Sometimes a slight little tap with a mallet to major shift the spring down so you can actually remove the collets. So the second one out. Yeah, that magnetic tool is very handy. Because you don't really want to put your fingers in there. Especially when the spring's under so much pressure. So here's a closer view. And you can see the two split collets there. Off one comes. Then the second one and now the spring's ready to come off. Take the pressure off and out we come. Again making sure to keep them all in the correct location so you can put them back again. I'm even keeping the collets with the actual valves they came out of. So here's a different angle showing the other side where the valve is. So you just put that onto the head of the valve. I'm just tweaking that in a bit more so I can get my magnetic pickup in there. Get those two collets out. You probably should wear safety glasses while doing this, just in case something went wrong and the spring shot off, that's hit you in the face. I also found I was using two different types of spring compressor there because one of them sort of lended itself to being just slightly tapped on the end with a mallet just to shock the collets free. So that's all the inlet done now. And now the exhaust valves. So here I'm now going to use my older 
spin compressor and as you can see the end of it's sort of flat which actually turned out to be quite handy because I could just sort of put the tension on and when the spring didn't want to go down I could just lightly tap that end with a mallet to get the collets to release so well, the other one is more versatile it has more adapters on it so here's a very close-up view you can clearly see the two split collets there just watch your fingers though because it is under a lot of tension and the second collet and there's all our valves now going back in so we've got 16 in total they're all nicely organized Here's a quick view of the head with all the 16 valves removed. I thought the head actually looked reasonably clean for 110,000 miles. And now to remove some of the carbon deposits. So for cleaning the carbon off I'm going to start with spraying it all with WD-40 and then using a Dremel and quite a small softish wire brush I'm going to just pop that all round and gently try and clean off the carbon which is actually coming off okay so try and make sure you don't actually scratch anything and then give that a clean WD-40 seems to be quite good for this it's coming up quite easily that's looking better already so I will try and go down into the ports as well um, just to try and clean that off a bit to help with the flow of gases in and out I'm not going to spend an excessive amount of time on this part because I just need the engine to be working and it's not going to be going around racetracks so as long as it's cleaner than it was and fully functioning that's really all I'm after so that's got to be better than it was so that should do now to clean the 16 valves so I'm now going to use a Makita die grinder here with a wire brush again I'm not going to go excessive because I certainly don't want to cause any damage and I'm not going past where the carbon is on the actual valve stem um, because I don't want to go where the seal is on the, the rubber seal that stops the oil coming down so I'm keeping all the cleaning work to below where the actual carbon has built up as you can see I'm not going up that stem and then it's just a case of working your way through all 16 valves next one now for lapping the valves so this is the grinding paste I use you have fine and coarse I'm gonna stick with fine because I think the cylinder head actually looks reasonably good condition um, so I'm just gonna go with the fine and there's two methods that can be used standard method is to use the stick with the like sucker on the end and this is why I cleaned the valves first before doing this so that the little sucker would suck to the top of the valve and then you just rotate it backwards and forwards lift the valve put it into another position and keep doing this you should keep lifting the valve to make sure that the grinding is even and also make sure you don't get any of the paste inside the engine so you do this for a while and then when you actually look at the seat and the rim of the piston of the valve you'll notice that it's a nice dull color and it's all clean so there should be 
a good seal there now between the seat and the valve. See a nice uniform colour. Okay, and then the other method is to use a oscillating attachment for your drill. Um, so you put the grinding paste on as normal. And then you using your cordless drill. Now you have to hold the centre part of the tool, otherwise it would just spin with the drill. But if you notice, as I hold it, the sucker on the pith on the valve just oscillates backwards and forwards, like so. Now that speeds it up considerably. And if we give that a wipe over now, you can see a nice grey band where the grinding paste has done its job. So that's a nice even colour there. Make sure we get all the paste out of the seat on the cylinder head. So I'll show again. This time I'll do a close-up shot so you can really see the end of the tool. So pop that on, make sure we hold it, and you can clearly see it oscillate backwards and forwards while sometimes falling off. There we are. So it does make life a lot easier. So that's the main two methods of lapping valves. Like I say, make sure you get all of the paste out. You certainly don't want any of that in the engine. Removing the valve seals. So I was using a valve seal tool here, um, which normally simplifies the tasks quite well. You know, you put it on, grip it, and pull and they come off. But on this Honda engine they were extremely tight. Those first few had actually loosened just to show for the video. But in reality I'll show you what I was actually confronted with which is this. Very tight and the tool kept slipping off. Just keep slipping. So I know this was quite a cheap tool, whether they do a better quality one I don't know, but it didn't seem to bite into the seal that well and these seals were pretty snug on there. After pulling the valve seals off I noticed there was some plastic residue around so I used compressed air there just to clear all that away. Then to clean under the spring seats. So noting that the compressed air was lifting these valve seats off and that there might have been a very small risk of some of the little plastic debris being blown underneath these seat washers. I thought it wise that we remove those and make sure that they're all clean and that nothing's sat underneath that could affect the pressure of the spring. So I gave them all a little clean. I think due to the amount of work involved in this, it's certainly wise to make sure there's nothing left in the cylinder head that could cause a problem later on. Now to pop on the new valve seals. So I used a little bit of spray lubricant there just to help with these popping back on. Because bearing in mind how tight they were to try and take off. So that just, I think they do do a tool actually for pushing these on as opposed to using your finger or you can use a socket, um, a small socket I think is also quite useful just to push them on. I think that's looking tidier than it was so we should better get the valves and the springs back on now. Time to pop the valves back in. 
I use like a spray lubricant to wash the valve guides out just to make sure there was no debris or anything sat in there and then each of the valves I gave a generous coating of engine oil onto the stems before popping them back in and I did that for each of the valves so they're nicely lubricated now to put the exhaust valve springs back on so we put our spring back on along with our retainer at the top and compress the spring again you should wear glasses when doing this because it's under tension and then we've just got to put the two collets back in now it's normally easier if you put a bit of grease on the collets because that way they actually stick to the end of the valve stem so with a small pair of needle nose pliers just pop one half on then get the other half grease it and very carefully pop it in you may need to use a very small screwdriver as well just to finally lift it into position and then as centrally as you can remove the spring compressor so that's one valve in so I'll show you from a different angle now so spring and retainer on compress the spring like so I'll move the camera so that you can see better They are very fiddly these. So there we are, should be able to see right in there now. Use a little screwdriver just to pop it into position. Like I say the grease will hold it, or it should do. Then the second collet. pop that in. When you release the spring you do need to be somewhat careful that you don't jolt it. There we are. Now to the inlet valve springs. So the procedure is exactly the same with the inlet valves which is pop our spring on with retainer, carefully compress the spring making sure it's central grease our collet and pop the two collets on now like I say before you, you must be careful when you actually release that spring because if your collets aren't quite on or one of them's half off there is a risk that that spring will shoot off so when you release that spring you really want the retainer part to be central so that it grips the two collets and squeezes them together like so. A couple of hours later after my visit to A&E and one tetanus injection later which hurts. Let's remove that darn inlet manifold gasket after it's cut me three times. Thank you for watching and please see part 7 in this series.